When you look at this roster from top to bottom right now, we have one final roster spot remaining. That one final roster spot, we can utilize the MLE to fill that roster spot with another player. Now, that player for me needs to be, must be a backup big. But honestly, that's what I wanted. I didn't know if the Knicks wanted that. But again, because he comes in clutch for us each and every time, Ian Bagley gave us some updates. And according to him, the Knicks are interested in bringing in another backup center. Let's go ahead and break down these latest reports for Bagley and what he's saying about the Knicks and what they want to do at the backup center position. According to Bagley, right now with Preston Zachua, he made a decision to waive the no trades clause. Now, according to Bagley, I don't think he did that because the Knicks have a trade in place for later in the season. I assume he waived it as part of the negotiations with the Knicks that ended in a one-year, $6 million contract. So at least according here to Bagley, the reason that Achua waived his no-trade clause is likely because the Knicks paid him to waive his no-trade clause. But nonetheless, the Knicks still having him waive his no-trade clause is an indication that once December 15th comes up, that's when Preston Achua is likely uh, going to be traded, by the way, because again, that's when he's eligible to be traded. That's the only reason you have somebody sign a one-year contract worth $6 million and have them waive their no-trade clause. Because you have a plan in mind. But let's keep it going here. Um, Bagley continues here by stating, according to Sports Track, Achua cannot be traded until December 15th. So it would be strange if the Knicks had a trade involving Achua in place when they signed him. The Knicks did explore several options for the other backup centers earlier in the offseason via trade and free agency. Obviously, nothing came to fruition. They currently have Robinson, Achua, and Jericho Sims as possible centers. Based on this, I assume the Knicks would continue to at least explore their options to acquire another big man. Let's stop right there. As you just heard, given where the Knicks are right now, they have the one roster spot remaining. They have the MLE. Excuse me, they have the MLE, the mid-level exception. They have the ability to add another player to this roster. And according to Ian Bagley, and all the reports that we've been seeing, the Knicks are interested in adding another backup center. You can say whatever you want to say to me about Preston Achua, the Knicks signing him to be the backup center. Yes, right now he's the backup center. Because if you look at the roster, the Knicks have more faith in Achua than they have in Sims. That's why he's penciled in as the backup center. But if he was playing his traditional role, he would be backing up Julius Randle. The only way that can happen is if the Knicks go out there and use the MLE to get a backup big. And according to Ian Bagley, they're looking to do that. And if they look to do that with the, with the mid-level exception and they add a backup big to this roster, you move Achua back to his natural position, backing up Julius Randle. You have a legitimate center who has center-like instincts who can back up Mitchell Robinson. And as of right now, the Knicks obviously have targets available. One of the targets that they were rumored to be interested in was Omer Yurtseven. But as noted on a video that we recently released on the channel, Mark Stein, an NBA insider, recently revealed that the Knicks auditioned free agent big man Omer Yurtseven, among others, but did not elect to sign him. So all the reports about the Knicks having interest in Yurtseven was dead on. Unfortunately, when it was time for him to show out during his workout with the Knicks, it doesn't seem like he did what he needed to do. That's why the Knicks elected not to sign him. But if you noticed, NBA insider Mark Stein did mention that Yurtseven was among others that the Knicks were looking to sign and work out. So even Mark Stein here confirms that the Knicks still have interest in adding another big to this roster. And that's the Knicks plan here. That's what they're trying to do. And again, going to more information here from Bagley, as you can see here, he answered a question on his mailbag. Uh, and the question that was asked to him was, given the way Matthias Lasor has played in the Olympics for France and New York owning his draft rights, any reason he isn't looked at for a roster spot given the need at center? And according to Bagley, who answered that question, it's a great question. Lasor played well during the Olympics. We noted last week, that the Knicks inquired about Lasort's interest in signing with the team earlier in the offseason. The team and player could not find common ground. 
Lasort presumably would need to be bought out by his current contract with, I'm not even going to try to say the name, but I know it's a Greek team and, uh, in Euro, so I'm going to say that. And he is under contract with that club for 2024, 2025. So as of right now, even if the Knicks wanted to go after Matthias and they wanted to get him on this team, and again, he did look good in stretches in the Olympics, but just because you look good in the Olympics doesn't mean it's always going to translate to the NBA. But the reason I would want the Knicks to go after him is because while offense doesn't translate, defense oftentimes do does. And his defense, which you were watching during the Olympics, his defense impressed me. Because look at the type of players he was guarding. Like he wasn't guarding scrubs. He was getting pushed around, don't get me wrong. But he was holding his ground a lot. And I look at that. I look at that at players the Knicks are going to look at. And clearly, the Knicks look at that too. Because they wanted to add him. We have his draft rights back from the 2020 trade that we made with Kemba Walker. So clearly, we have the ability to bring him here. But we'd have to get some um, type of, I believe Ian Bagley said, some type of um, wave from his current team right now in, in Greece to let us say, hey, you guys can have him right now. You can play in the NBA. I think they wouldn't have a problem doing that. But the Knicks and, and uh, Lesore would have to find common ground. They were not able to do that. I don't think they're going to. But it goes back to the same point I'm trying to make, right? With the Knicks. And what are they looking for? At each and every hurdle, where they could, either in free agency, trade, even right now. Bagley said this report came out a week ago. We did a video on it. All they're trying to do is still look for what? Backup centers to Mitchell Robinson. Because they understand. They've identified it. When you look at the roster, what is the weakest piece? It's center. It's not to say we're a bad team. We're not. We're contenders with Mitchell Robinson starting. What the argument is, how can we stay healthy and remain in that contender status while having a center at the five that is injury prone? You need to have insurance or another player like Bismack Biombo or somebody to that tier who can play under, uh, under a head coach like Tom Thibodeau. Getting us a player like that, that fits. That helps us. It helps us now. And potentially, it could help us at the trade deadline if we increase their value. The Knicks have so many options here, but they need to utilize that mid-level. They cannot leave it to do nothing. It can't just do nothing out there. And I know a lot of you guys want us to play the rookies. I understand it. Ariel Huckaportis of the world. I get it. I hear you. But let me tell you something. Those guys are not going to get the time you think they're going to get. They're on two-way contracts for a reason. I'm looking at you, Ariel Huckaporti. And even if he did find time, if he's playing for the Knicks, something drastically wrong has happened. Something terrible has happened if he's playing because that means we're dealing with a lot of injuries. If you enjoyed these clips from the live show, be sure to subscribe to the channel and have notifications turned on so you don't miss any new episodes or when we go live. Thanks for watching, Nick fans. And until next time, peace.